大家好<笑> ，It's very interesting. Uh, 大家 is means great and、uh, 大 is great and 家 is family. 好 is mean be well. So this is a way when uh a、uh, group of people together, we usually say 大家大家 as a great family. So I would say, dear brothers and sisters, and <laughs> actually, I, every time when I was in my nunnery, I always try to、uh, get out of the BBC because my teacher、uh, learned something from Swasti Abbey. We have a Udi Safa Birth Circle, BBC, <laughs> every day in my nunnery. After, yeah, after my what time to my what children visited. And actually, during the Vinaya course, uh, well, uh, couple three times came to me and said, "Mabel, would you please give a BBC talk?" And I refused and refused and said, "I have a good reason. I need to prepare for Vinaya teaching." And <laughs> and she was very kind. And then I said, "Okay, I might try to do this during the retreat time when I stay." Then in the beginning, I was so happy because Mabel children doing it. At, By herself, so when the day she said we were going to do log tail, I was I was so oh please don't come to me. <laughs> then, <laughs> then one day we were about ten day, her way just put a note on my table and say I'm informing you that you are going to have a schedule on March fourth Sunday. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> then I just feel like oh no escape anymore. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but um. Yeah, I I really want.、Uh, okay, after I start to prepare, I just find oh, I have so many to share. <laughs> okay, so today I might try to share one topic about that.、Uh, there is one sentence in Chinese called "Pu Sha Wei Yin Zhong Shen Wei Guo." It means Bodhisattva. Bodhisattvas focus on causes, but ordinary beings focus on result. And So I will start、uh, share this by telling a fable. And long time ago, in a small village, lived two people. And because of their huge stealing, so、uh, they were punished by having two big data ST stealing、uh, cup on the forehead of their they, in their way to be、um, kind of.、Uh, Warm、uh, that they they shouldn't do something like that anymore. And one of the person、uh, after this kind this kind of、uh, sentence, he really you know kind of feel like I'm doomed to failure all my life. So he abandoned himself、uh, even more into drinking, into more robberies. So after ten years, he. He、uh, was sentenced to be a, like a life imprisonment. However, the other person, the other thief,、um, he think he could create a new life, and he decide to take this as a non sign for him. So, all those in the very beginning abuse ran down to him over times, you know. Again and again and again, but he didn't really、uh, resist. He kept、uh, take the whole responsibility to to just take whatever come to him, and he had a very strong、uh, motivation, want to do something good to people, to be benevolent, like practice a lot of、uh, benevolent、mm, to people. Then. After ten years, people really respect him and love him. And you know, fable is a fable, story is a story. In this story, that、um, it happened that in one after the ten years, one day, this、um, the first person、uh, was carried by the policeman. Policeman passed close the charity center of the other person. So there was a little girl's. Putting her little finger into the right hand of her mother, and walking across the street, and then he saw the first person in the policeman car and say, 
Mommy, what happened? The person have an ST on the forehead. The mother say, oh, the ST means super thief. <laughs> and mother was very <laughs> kind of scared, so hold, hold the, the, the little girl tightly. Then they walked through the other uh, charity center, and the, the second man came out and sweep and helping some poor people there. And the little girls so eh, he also had ST on the forehead. So he asked the mother again. The mother said, oh, this ST means saint. <laughs> it's S-A-I-N-T. Then, um, OK, this is a story. <laughs> OK, so when uh, we're talking about the, count, the law, I think this story showed the, the law of the uh, karma, the cause and effect. And the second person really respected to each moment of his own life to try to create any kind of new opportunity for himself. So he totally changed his own um, destiny. Not, not really fatal by the kind of, uh, you know, like a fixed set on only this ST. He totally changed the meaning of this. So when I ponder about the bodhisattvas, focus on the causes, and ordinary beings focus on the result. That most of the time when we're talking about the karma, <clears throat> we think, oh, sometimes the lay people will ask me, why some people, they are so generous, but they, they are so poor, they're still so poor. But some people, they do something so wrong, and they have so much power, so much fame, and so much... And how can you describe the karma to me? So then my, my uh, response to that is, actually, karma is not something that resolves of your fame, the name, the success, the wealth, the whatever uh, smooth uh, situation. It's the way how you respond to whatever comes to you that will decide that is a bad karma or is a good karma. So even the word of the merit, sometimes we kind of think, oh, you have such great merit to, to, to own this opportunity or this, this kind of thing. But how it can become a merit or not is really about that individual will put it into a conducive uh, condition for practice, for benefit beings or not, to decide this is a merit, or this is, you know, it's a good merit. Or sometimes for some people, you know, even for the, the story, the first the story there, the fable, if the second man, after become a great, you know, people really love him, respect him, very great beings, but he become very pr arrogant, pr with a, a lot of pride, you know, and might indulge into a lot of pleasure, his life might could change uh, again. Okay, so this is something not the, about the karma or about the merit. This kind of understanding is seem, seems uh, need to correspond to the teaching of the dependent arising. Now, before I go to that, I would like to share one of my own story. <laughs> and this story happened um, in my second year of ordination, actually it's 26 years ago. Yeah. And by that time, I'm very feel like, oh, I, I'm a new, I'm a good nun, I'm a, I want to do everything for the community. So when I was in the institute, one day the uh, disciplinarian, uh, he, she, she set up a new regulation for the whole institute. And all the students there, about 40 of us, all feel it's unreasonable. And we feel this is too bad. And so then we discuss, and everyone really feel like we need to respond to that. It's nonsense, you know, we shouldn't do that. Then I, I was very brave, said, OK, I come, stand up and speak for you. <laughs> <laughs> then, <laughs> then I went and I, I fight with the disciplinarian. And then, but after several times, it happened that everyone was pacified and that things changed. And 
uh, I still don't know why, why they want to follow, but I become like a problem person, <laughs> you know, like because I I speak loud and to say something. So so during that time, I have a very hard time. I feel very I, very resentful and very I hold a lot of anger in my heart. And one day I went to the garden with barefoot, and I come back and I think I I need to meditate. I need to do walking meditation. Then I walk into the. We have a shrine room uh, with a marble, bright marble ground, very shining. Um, so I walk and walk uh, around the Buddha hole and do the walking meditation and call in the uh, Amitabha, Amitabha, but I don't see the light. I see the darkness, <laughs> you know, and <laughs> walking, walking. And as I think about a third of which is circle, I just find out why. Nobody clean clean the the room. It's so dirty. All the footprint with dirt. What happened to this? Then, then suddenly I realized, you know, when I see, oh, it's dirt from my feet. <laughs> <laughs> I I just came back from the garden and I with my bare feet and I forgot I didn't put on shoes. And I just see the the whole ground was polluted. My own dirt, uh, dirty feet. And when I watch the the feet sprint, I kind of realize, oh, you know, I'm I'm the person initially. I really concerned about community, but my, my, me now I'm become the person create the <laughs> pollution <laughs> atmosphere for the community. It really kind of hit me quite. I mean, from seeing that that uh, dirty uh, feet spring there, so I decide to wash my feet and come sit down and just come and just contemplate about what is the causes of the you know the the things what's happening. Then, at some point, I, I have that kind of a more humble attitude to really go <laughs> to. Ask the disciplinarian, uh, this disciplinarian, to ask her why do you want to set up this regulation, and to ask the other student why you follow. And later, I I kind of just try to to listen to what happened there, and I I really see how much uh, at that time I I think I was really quite. Young and in some way is very loyalty to the community, and I want to do something good, and want to put my my effort on it. But on the other way, it's a little bit arrogant, you know. I would say a lot of arrogance. Just feel like I'm right, yeah. And I feel, and and also I kind of find out that for the because the disciplinarian, she is a administrator. So she, the way how she handles things is not only react to the institute, also need to react to the whole sangha in the bigger picture. So some of the consideration I didn't really see from my very small role of a student and the very only second year of ordination. I am really kind of very limited vision and to perceive something big and point out something was wrong. Yeah. So, so from the story, yeah, I could see that uh, when we say that, uh, I think the result is also important for us to contemplate and to see as a mirror to see things. But what we really need to see more closely is the causes, and and also underneath of the causes, there is very interesting. Um, teaching about the dependent origination that allows all the possibility arise. So that's why every moment could be have a, every pop, a new uh, opportunity. So my understanding about Amitabha, uh, talking about the infinite uh, light, is actually is the uh, um, endless hope, you know, because the sunyata, because the emptiness. Of the dependent arising, that we could every time to start to 
uh, create a new situation. So that experience for me now become very remarkable for my own growth. Without that kind of, uh, you know, I I still perceive. Although the story, when I share, I, 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 it seems like uh, quite painful during the process, but I see this is very uh, beneficial for my own uh, reflection, and in terms of how to kind of really understand what does mean courage is not only stand up and speak, but also is sit down and listen. <laughs> it's a real courage. And I also find that um, although that everyone wants to be a diamond, but no one are willingly, very few are willingly to be cut. <laughs> so this <laughs> really want to be. <laughs> and I think this really put the teacher's job into a very difficult situation. Okay, so so I think for me, like uh, for I uh, want to share you about the Amitava. Actually, when I discussed with Ramo Damcho, she said, "Why not share something about the." Pure land uh, practice in my country, but I I just want to share. I think uh, very good that this morning when Bernabo Sapo uh, read about the Amitava Sutra. Actually, that is the one every evening we uh, chant in my nunnery. Yeah, and in that uh, practice, there are main three factors we call Xin Yuan Xing in Chinese is faith. You need to have a faith. In the three jewels, and aspiration, then action. So these three main factors made people be able to be born in the pure land. But that one, um, I won't go that far. And I, I'm going to finish this uh, BBC by reading one passage from the the nature of Manjushri's speech by Kunsan Pardon, and. This is a book uh, for the commentary of Bodhicharavatara, and there is one passage mentioned about. I think is important for related to today's topic. So, in the appearance of Manjushri's Buddha field, said that everything depends upon conditions, and lies within the root of eager aspiration. Whatever prayers a person makes, resolved in kind, are surely to be reaped. Consequently, it is those who have the keenest interest in the Dharma who will turn out to be the best practitioners. Average interest and aspiration make for an average practitioner. Lesser interest with Resolve in a practitioner of lesser capacity. Thus, aspiration and interest are of capital import importance. And since it's difficult to have this from the very beginning, it's necessary to cultivate it in the mind. And this book also uses、uh, an analogy that mention about that we should be like a we shouldn't. Uh, be always downward looking like a dog on the roof of a house. Instead, we should be like a bird perched on the ground beside the house, constantly looking up. <laughs> okay, okay. So I wish、uh, everyone have an inspiring, enriching, and enlightening retreat. Amitabha. <laughs>